Hey, college football fans, Joel Klatt here. And over on my podcast, The Joel Klatt Show, we discuss the best teams, players, and storylines in all of college football. Any questions? Then send them in to The Joel Klatt Show mailbag, and I'll answer them. Tap the banner to follow The Joel Klatt Show on Spotify. Hot show, hot show, live from New York. It's the show that's looking for a branded coffee sponsorship. What do you think about that? Like, first yeah, things first, coffee. That by us. <laughs> I'm going to so talk to the sales department. You out if you own a coffee company, hey, eh? huh? yeah. we're going to do a lot of airtime. It's first things first. Today, Stefan is gone, and we've got new sound from the Bills GM that I honestly thought was a very late April Fool's joke, but it's real. Meanwhile. You honestly thought that? I honestly I thought, thought that. April Fool's. When I saw it, I said, he certainly didn't mean <laughs> that. <laughs> Meanwhile, LeBron, LeBob. Larry O'Brien or bust. What did we learn from the latest Lakers victory over the, loudly checks notes, Wizards? <laughs> and finally, why C.J. Stroud might find himself on the most motivational segment wow. in all of sports television. Well, he's one buttons? of my guys. So, wow. Yeah. Alongside Kevin Nick tried to steal him from me, but no. <laughs> Kevin, it, it will not happen. Wild. Bro, why is C.J. on the bud list? Or is he even? Yeah, he maybe he is. He was in consideration, so we'll see. Who <laughs> likes to keep that close? Yeah, to the we'll back, see right? in an hour. He is. He's third. Oh wow! Well, <laughs> wow! <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the bus. Yeah, this unbelievable betrayal. <laughs> Bills GM Brandon Bean, who is running point on a roster remake that has said goodbye to Tre'Davious White and Jordan Poyer and Mitch Morris and Gabe Davis and Leonard Floyd and now Stephon Diggs. Here's his take on the latest trade. Anytime you make a move like this, uh, as I said, very difficult, you're, um, you're doing it, you're trying to win. And sometimes people may not see that, um, you know, this is by no means the pills giving up or trying to take a step back or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, are we better today? Probably not. Yeah, we're, it's, a, it's a work in progress, and um, we're going to continue to work on that. Yeah. Cut some more guys. And that, get even better. No, and that that's why Josh and Sean McDermott needed to find try to find a way to make this work. Mm. Because there is no immediate benefit. Like there you didn't get cap relief this mm-hmm. year. You didn't all of a sudden open up more snaps for, you know, a young position group that we, like what the Packers have, where it's like, man, we have more wide receivers than we have, you know, right. passes available. You didn't even get a return this season. Nope. You know what I mean? Your The draft pick you have comes a year from now. And I'm not trying to act as if the Bills shouldn't be concerned about a year and two years and three years from now. Of course, you should always be doing some long-term planning. But you get no immediate benefit with significant drawback with the only real. So then why, why did they do it is, of course, the question. And it's because the benefit they feel is getting Stefan out of the building. Yep. Yeah. The benefit is the toxicity of the culture or the relationships. And so then I just go to Josh and, Mc, and Sean McDermott. Even if Stefan is the common denominator of the problems from Minnesota to here, he also is right now a person that the Bills need more than he needs the Bills. Because nobody's looking at Stefan Diggs saying, oh, he's in bad I mean, shape it's now. It's worked yeah. out great. Yeah. It has worked out great for him, and he gets his money. And Because here's the problem, bro. They don't have any good options. So I, they are not – I don't believe they have a, any chance of trading for T. Higgins because I don't think Cincinnati will do it. Maybe they could trade their first-round pick for Brandon Ayuk, but they clearly don't want – to add another salary. super expensive salary. Yeah. That's why Poyer and Hyde and Trey White and those guys, they had to get rid of them. Okay, so they'll draft a guy at 28. Well, that's a problem as well because you know that Marvin Harrison, Neighbors, and Adunze are going top 10 or at least top 12. You know those three are gone. So then you're just hoping that you go almost 20 picks of the draft with no receivers taken so you can draft wide receiver four. Or more likely, you end up drafting wide receiver five or six. Like, that's not a path. And I'm not saying it's not doable and you can't get a good player. Right, but so they have no great options here, Brew, and they have no immediate replacement. And obviously, they're not better. So that's the problem. The thing is, they I'm sure they did try. I mean, I, I think that's why... 
or a big reason why Stephon was on the team last year. Because this isn't new. Remember, it began last year and maybe even before that. I mean, the playoffs was obviously the year before. So I I think they tried everything they could. um, And for whatever reason, Stephon just – he remained a – and I do think it was primarily Stephon. I mean, we've talked, we talked about it when it happened, but if, if a family member that's close to you yep. tweets something out, then if, you, if it's not true or if you really want to shoot it down, you go out and you shoot it down in no uncertain terms. All right? You don't just say, oh, that wasn't me. No, no shoot it down. And so I, I do think they felt that's the only reason. Because like you said, there's no present day, there's no uh, present benefit for it. But look, it sounds silly when he says, are we better now? No. All right, but look, the Bills, I'm not going to kill any. They went for it, Nick. They went for it. All right, they're doing – they did what Houston oh, is that doing. that's true. They did what Cincinnati did. They did what uh, 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 San Francisco's they, doing. They did what Kansas City did. Yeah, yes. When you have a pro- quarterback on his rookie deal who's really good, you go for it. And they went for it, and the problem is that they didn't get a Super Bowl. They didn't even get to a Super Bowl. and But after it happens, win or lose, you got to tear it down. And so now they're tearing it down. The good thing for them is they still have Josh Allen. And for all his warts, and really it's one, he's reckless with the football. Well, it's kind of he's sti- but he's still a great quarterback. Yeah. He's got more touchdowns than any quarterback. You look at this graphic since 2019 by a wide margin, by 23. You see Mahomes is second. Now, obviously, that wow. includes rushing what touchdowns. A, what? A graphic. Look at that. It's Mahomes this and folks that he would not be in the same room with except well, for Dak. Well, remember, hold on, Russ. It's, like, it's since 2019. <laughs> no, I understand. So, Russ just, is obviously a lot of that Seattle. Kirk Cousins no, I has been it. prolific. Yeah. I, 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 it's just I interesting. Who my take away and Aaron Rodgers is, is yeah. won two MVPs yeah. Yeah. With yeah. since 2019. No correlation between touchdowns and winning football. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just saying. No, it, 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 y'all can mock it all that. The Bills have been a winning team. They just haven't been able to get know, over Mount Mahomes. It is a fair takeaway. Dak has been a winning team. I'm, I'm, this is, I don't think it includes playoffs. So the, that I'm is shocked. good in the regular season. Uh, uh, and Rodgers, you know. So can know. I give a different silver lining quickly, Wild? Yeah, and then I have one too. Yeah, who is the, not Brett Favre, who is the quarterback you compared uh, Josh to yesterday? Modern quarterback. Oh, Cam. Cam. Cam Newton, yeah. Well, I was saying, if they're going to have him run more and he's going to take more hits. Right. Yeah. That, that's a, but that, I'm not talking about that But there's some regard. other similarities. Yes, of yeah. course. So this is what Cam went through. Hmm. They got rid of Steve Smith. And then they ended up bringing in Kelvin Benjamin through a late draft pick. Now that next year, there's kind of a sweet and sour to this for Bills fans. That very next year, the Panthers were 7-8-1, and one, and Cam right. took a step back. Now they did win their division and actually won a playoff game. <laughs> the NFC South was brutal then, similar to how it is it's now. It's brutal a lot but at the time. The year, and so it was like, hey, we don't need Steve Smith. He's a bit of a headache. Steve Smith ended up going on playing a lot more yep. years, by the way. They brought in Kelvin Benjamin, the late-round draft pick. They had Greg Olson, a tight end. We know the Bills like their tight end. The next year, Cam and the team took a step back. The year after that was the 15-1 and in MVP okay. season. And so – That they, was Cam's career. It was – you know what I mean? Uh, like every uh, season, it was yeah, every, what's the every word other year. It was a roller coaster, coaster, right. Yeah, exactly. And so, so the point that I'm making is – the player that, you know, you were saying there's some stylistic right. similarities to went through some. Steven Ruiz pointed this out on Twitter yesterday. And I thought I was like, oh, he's right. And I went and looked. And so the very next year, Cam did suffer significantly. Mm-hmm. But the year after that, without the, their big investment wide receiver that year was Ted Ginn, just right. a deep threat, Ooh. had the best year of his career. I like Ted Ginn. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Good round. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's another glass half full look at it. Joe Brady wants to run. Yeah. Granted, was the OC at LSU or a passing game coordinator, I think. It's like, air it out. Goes to Carolina, doesn't really work. But when he took control of that offense, he decided to throw the ball the least and run the most, and it's worked. Went 7-2. and two. Their rushing percentage was the most in the league at 51. And granted, it's not huge. Like, the lowest is, you know, yeah. 47 or something. But uh, rush of the game first, rushing yards third, rushing TDs third, and Allen had 48 designed runs or sneaks in that span, which is the most of anybody, bro. So I know you're worried about the the injury component of that, but it feels like Joe Brady saw um, uh, Josh Allen be a gunslinger and have it there be a ceiling on this. Like, you know what? Let's just run the ball. This is what you're great at. And it 
you know, they went seven and two with him. So I assume they're going to try to do that this year. And maybe it sounds mean, but they didn't need Stefan. No, I, I think they saw. I think that's one of the things that convinced them they could move on from Stefan. We always say it. If you're producing, we'll put up with the distractions and the problems. But if you're not, then we so, won't. And, and, and Brady, I, I'll give Brady credit to Joe Brady. He seems to be the type of guy to adjust to his personnel. Because you mentioned Ooh, LSU, so. and they would throw the football like this. I think he's making an adjustment and saying – because I don't think he's one of those guys that's always got to run the football. No, I agree. But I, I think he's saying, in this situation, let's do it. And I, another guy I have compared Josh to a little bit, John Elway. Remember, he won his Super Bowls when they had Ter- Terrell Davis so. later on. So – I, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. A lot of 12 personnel with the two tight ends run the football, and Josh will throw it, but you limit the, the mistakes that he's going to make in the air. Yeah. So I disagree that? with all of that. How can you? So, a- because, so I don't think Joe Brady – I agree with you, he will adjust. I don't think Joe Brady was running the football because it's what he wanted to do. I think it's Joe Brady was running the football because he wanted to be named the full-time offensive coordinator, which he was, and he knows that's what McDermott wants. And I think this so entire – So you think he'll switch it up I, I, No, no, no. I think, I think he is going to keep doing it. I just don't think it is I, – I, the right now especially, the best thing the Bills have going for him, warts and all, is Josh. Josh Allen, and all of a sudden asking him to be a game manager is not the way well, to him. He, I don't that's think he was far. a game manager but, at the end because he, he's running a lot, too. Right. And it, he will throw it. And that's the other thing that I think is not how you spend your – how you use your franchise quarterback well, to put him in that type of jeopardy. About, but I want to be very clear here. I do not think the Bills becoming a run-first team is the way through for them. I do think – that bruised take, which was that Sean McDermott should have been on a hotter seat than he was, I think that has aged very well because I think there is an alternate path here where they, even though they had the great end of season, they look at it and they say, you know what, this ain't the guy. We need to bring in an offensive coach that maybe that can salvage the Stephon Diggs relationship. Maybe it would, maybe it, if you bring in, whether it's the Detroit offensive coordinator that everybody loves, who's yeah, named uh, Ben, Johnson. The, the, uh, Ben Johnson, or maybe you steal Bobby Sloak away from right. Houston. Somebody, somebody would want to coach Josh on oh, the yeah. offensive side. Stephon, then you have a new relationship because evidently he and McDermott were on the same page. And you say, we're going to utilize our biggest weapon. And it is my job to do what Dable did, which is get the highs without all the lows. I think they have a defensive-minded, conservative, nervous head coach sure. that wanted to run the ball, uh, that, run the ball. Fair. The offensive coordinator wanted to impress him because he's the one to get that was going to name it was him. 7-2. and two. The, I understand. Like save the season. No, I know it worked in the short term. I don't think that is long-term what the Bills want to be and th- their highest upside. I don't think they're going to ever beat the Chiefs by being like, we're going to ground and pound you guys. I don't, th- I don't think that's going to I mean, that happen. was, look, obviously they, you lose, you lose. But that was a good playoff game. I mean, they lost by three. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they, they, they outplayed the Chiefs for a, a good chunk of that game. They, yeah, they also, yeah, I mean, they also were about to go down 10 in the fourth quarter, and right. even though that fumble happened, they still lost the game. Like, I just... I don't know. I, I think that's the wrong approach, personally. But it's the coach. It's the approach Sean McDermott wants, and I think it's a mistake. And Genie loves it. I love me Genie, <laughs> but I, uh, I'd hire him to coach a lot of teams, but not Josh Allen. Meanwhile, Stephon Diggs took to Instagram to do what? You may ask. Low key diss Josh Allen again? No. <laughs> to thank the city of Buffalo. I can't begin to express the amount of love and respect I have for the city of Buffalo. Four of the best years of my life. The city welcomed me with open arms. I'm forever grateful for you all and the Buffalo Bills organization exclamation point. Here's Stefan's raw stats the last few years, bro. Uh, last six seasons, still pretty productive. If I mix yeah. those up, doesn't seem to be any real fall off. Always had at least, I guess he had six, but basically eight touchdowns. Are you expecting a monster year from Stefan this year? No, I'm expecting oh. a good year. Oh, I'm expecting a good year. And I know, look, and we have the graphic. When he went from Minnesota, which was his worst season, to his last year there, to his first season with Buffalo, you see he basically doubled his production in terms of receptions yep. and obviously big-time improvement with the yards. So he was great. So some people are expecting that. I think you have a good year. I think Monster is too strong because he's certainly the number one receiver in name. Nico Collins had a really nice year. Mm-hmm. Nico Collins is bigger than Stephon Diggs, obviously much younger. He's only in his fourth season. About the same speed, or I don't even know if Stefan's as fast as Nico now. They both ran a 4-4-40 at the combine, and Stephon, that was a long time ago for Stefan. No, no. So my point is, 
I mean, Nico was almost 17 yards a catch last year. And so I think – I'm not saying Stephon's not going to be number one. Okay. But I think they they got a lot of weapons. Tank Dell's going to get the football. Uh, Nico's going to get the football. You got Joe Mixon running and catching the football. And Dalton so – Dalton Schultz tight end. Yeah, I, I think that – here's the challenge – Stephon has been one – he's been second in the league in targets over the last five years to Devontae Adams. Exactly. He's averaged 160 targets a year. I'm still not happy. Right. So he's not getting – I don't think he gets close to that, Nick, So next I don't year. think he gets so – I think he has to make sure he, he stays cool. So I do think he's going to have an excellent year. Uh, I think it might be the last great year of his career because wide receivers over 30 it, uh, historically are, you know, don't fare well. He turns. And do you think it's, it's probably a little different now? Guys are playing yeah, but even, or maybe even last shape? year you look at it, it was like Thielen and Kelsey were the only guys over 32 that were doing much of anything. Yeah. Devontae Adams, I think, was 32. I, I got a graphic here. Of oh, like go ahead. Older, yeah. older. Uh, uh, wide receivers on their first year. It's DeAndre. It's 31. I think you said 32. So we thought DeAndre was washed ad- adjacent, maybe. He no, was I, good. I, He's not what he used to be. I, I, yeah, I but. think he is en route to that. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I, he had a good. That's a good year. That's a solid year for you know. No quarterback, the quarterback really. kind of carousel. I think he's going to have a, a big year. So, I am very nervous. I watched um, the shop, Nick, when Stefan was on, and one of the reasons he said he wanted to leave Minnesota was because he didn't want to be number two to Adam Thielen. Yeah, and that's what was really getting him upset. Mm-hmm. So the idea that he's upset in Buffalo and now going to. Go to Houston. I think and be he'll number be two, the I number think. one in name. No, I don't listen. I don't think. That, I think Nico Collins has a, a potential to one day be a true number one. He is not in today's NFL yet mm-hmm. a true number one. Now Diggs might be on his way out of being a true number one. The question is because last year, the first half dozen games, he was, was as productive as ever as any stretch of his career, yeah. and then out of nowhere, it went away. And so it was very clear, and it was well before Joe Brady took over. So, But here's what I think he's going to benefit from quickly. One is he's never had this much talent around him in his time as Buffalo as he does now. In Buffalo, they were just doubling him every play. You know, I shouldn't say that. That Every play is not true. It was the Chiefs' strategy when they played him was double him, and that's why Gabe Davis had the monster playoff game that he's still living off of and other things. But I – the. So I think you're not going to be able to do that there. I also think, and Josh cooked this up. Appreciate it, Josh. We can show you. Deep down the field, last year, CJ was unbelievable. And Josh struggled mightily. And so can Stephon Diggs take advantage of some of that a little bit more? And I do like chip-on-your-shoulder angry diva wide receiver, at least for a year. Like, they, yeah, historically yeah, speaking, that. that can work really well in the short term. And Bruce point yesterday, that was... The Texans have no long-term commitment to him, so if it goes sour, that's fine. But I think he'll be—he'll get the easiest coverages he's gotten. Really solid quarterback play, smart offensive coordinating, which I don't know that he's gotten. So yeah, I think for a year he'll be a very, very good weapon. I buy that. All right, let's check in on Stefan's new home and C.J. Stroud, who is now in some good company, according to Chiefs insider Pete Sweeney. Now Sweeney put up this tweet of four shows, one of them just absolutely great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll miss you. Good morning, football. Is, uh, all with the same basic questions. Is Watson Mahomes the next QB rivalry, or is it Lamar versus Mahomes, or Allen versus Mahomes, or Burrow versus Mahomes? So Sweeney's like, oh, Stroud's up. Uh, so, Brew, do you think this is now Stroud versus Mahomes? Well, look, I, I think, as I said yesterday, Kansas City and Baltimore, to me, are the top tier of the AFC. I think Cincinnati and Houston are right there below them. Um, but, and I'm not going to sit here and say C.J. Stroud right now definitely is better than Lamar and Josh and Joe Burrow. Let's not forget about him. But what I will say is he has something in his favor in this type of argument or debate that all of them lack. So he's a better passer than Lamar. We would agree, right? He's an outright better passer than Lamar Jackson. Josh Allen, he's more poised, and he doesn't make the mistakes that Josh Allen makes. C.J. Stroud last year led the league in interception percentage, which was 1.0. 
I mean, very, that's a great are interception. Go off, though, don't, I mean, no, nah, but that's still great. I mean, even yeah. he threw five last year in yeah, 500 yeah. attempts. Yeah. What if he throws no, I, I, nine? I, I, I agree great. with you, Wilds. That la, what, la, but both could be true. Last year could be the cleanest he ever is with the football, and he still could be less interception Way, Exactly. Yeah, He's still not going to yeah. be Josh Allen in terms of recklessness. Burrow, let's just face it. He's injury prone, and it's not just – it'd be bad enough it was just the NFL. In college, he had his share of injuries. All right, so he's got that issue. Stroud doesn't. So even if you want to throw in Justin Herbert, already C.J. Stroud's got a playoff win, mm-hmm. and yeah. Herbert doesn't. So I think Stroud is showing at this early stage that he's got advantages that all of those other great players, they have a deficiency that he does not have. Yeah, there are no challengers. This is, I know everyone wants, and we can just put up the graphic and give them, put all four of the guys together. Combine them into one Captain Planet esque, you know, Frankenstein's monster of quarterbacks, and they're still trailing Mahomes in everything but MVPs. And Lamar's carrying the heavy load there all by himself. <laughs> um, and I did 40 touchdown seasons to be nice. We could have done 50 touchdown seasons, and of course, Mahomes has one of those as well. So here's the deal. I've, I said it before, I will say it again. Nobody gets to be Tom Brady or Peyton Manning when Patrick is both of them. You're going to have to be, you know what those four quarterbacks get to choose? Hey guys, have a draft. Who wants to be VJ Singh? Who wants to be David Duvall? Who wants to be Ernie Els? And who <laughs> wants to be Phil Mickelson? Because you're up against Tiger Woods. Yeah, the left-handed my, guy will be. My, my personal, Phil. I don't. My Duval. personal, you know, feelings would be that David Duvall should probably be Josh Allen. Showed the highest peak. People thought there was a lot of smoke. People still talk about that 59 round that he had one day. No, no it was on the cover does. of Sports Illustrated. Go remember, Wilds. He had the great Oakleys on, but never quite reached his potential. With the golf. I think that show. Joe Burrow will be <laughs> Phil Mickelson, okay. and and Ernie Els. You know what? I give that to CJ, and that leaves VJ for Lamar. That's what it'll be. But it is not Brady Manning. It is Gretzky against Messier and Lemieux and others, and it is Tiger against the field. There is no I, rival. You could have used Jordan. And who's no. Barkley? Who's Malone? That would have been easy. You know, it, it, you know, you could have went there. Yeah, but why would I use a guy who's not even the best in his own sport historically? Well, that would make sense. You definitely instead, couldn't have used LeBron. Instead, he, instead it would have had to be LeBron and bro, Steph right bro, there. Bro, there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you I'm don't even think that. No, you as far as era, think no, I, LeBron's you better don't even than Steph. Think that. But is the era in terms of winning? Right. That's Which what I'm talking why about. I both got four. Golf. I didn't bring up basketball. No, you don't. I just wonder why because it would have been a cleaner in. It wouldn't have been uh, 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 analogy. Been. That, that, it would have been. Who's going to be Barkley? Who's going to be Malone? Who's going to be Reggie Miller? Who's going to be, you yeah. know, all no, that? No, but that's the, but then the list is over. Just those three guys. I know, Not really. Gary three Payton, guys. Sean Kemp. Gary you know, Payton. A lot of other guys. Drexler. Clyde Drexler. Yeah. Here's a lot Clyde of guys. Drexler won a championship in the year Jordan played. Look it up, oh, really? America. I think he's playing base, more baseball no, he, than he basketball. Played. At that Look time. it up, America. How many games did he play? I think it was a hobby. Jordan or Drexler? It was a hobby for Jordan. I don't know. Drexler played a hobby in the finals. I'll tell you that Hey, college football fans, Joel Klatt here. And over on my podcast, The Joel Klatt Show, we discuss the best teams, players, and storylines in all of college football. Any questions? Then send them in to The Joel Klatt Show mailbag, and I'll answer them. Tap the banner to follow The Joel Klatt Show on Spotify. Welcome back to an electric show. Lakers in D.C. Both teams were on a back-to-back, and the Lakers win thwarted the Wizards' attempt to win their 16th game. Lakers finished their road trip 5-1, and one, beat the Bucks in OT, and prevailed against Memphis, Brooklyn, Toronto, and the Wizards, who are a combined 140 Wait, games out of first wild. place. That's crazy, because you, you said they were 5-1 and one on the road trip, and you only mentioned four teams there. What did I say? I, I don't know. I said prevailed against the Bucks. Oh, the Bucks. I didn't hear Brooklyn, the Brooklyn, Toronto, okay, the and the Wizards, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the Grizzlies, who are a combined 140 games yeah, out of okay. first place. Uh-huh. Nick, what did the Lakers prove with this gauntlet <laughs> that they were so able is, to So this through? is so oh, irritating. So, oh, my gosh. That, the, the, on the road trip, I mean, I don't know they proved anything. They, they did what they were supposed to do on the road trip. They went 5-1. and one. That's as good as you could have it's hoped for. They, the, and this game last night, if you weren't watching – the final score is wildly misleading. The Lakers were up 10 after the first, 15 after the third quarter, and they were up 14 when they did something, Brew, I've never seen a team do, and they maybe regretted after they did it. They took an intentional shot clock violation with a minute 45 left, up 14 to get all the starters out, and then they put in their deep bench, and all of a sudden, 
Th- you know, it was one bad. minute of wild this guy Jackson Hayes <laughs> later. Like Jackson. Okay, well, Jackson Hayes last night was minus 24 in 10 minutes I'm not of play. saying he should carry I, okay, the second I'm just, unit. I'm letting you know <laughs> that last <laughs> night in the non-Jackson Hayes minutes, the Lakers won by 30. Oh, it's and, his fault. And they, I'm just, he Jackson was minus, Hayes' fault. He was minus 24 in 10 minutes. So, Ooh. point is, the Lakers blew out the Wizards like they're supposed to. It just didn't end up looking like that. To me, Brew, what they have proven is not on the road trip. It's since It's the last two months. Over the last two months, they have been, and we can show it to you, one of the best teams in the sport. Now, are they going to get the reward of that, of not having to play in the double play-in, being the nine seed? I don't know. It's a very tough path, and you're running out of time. Mm. There's one win separating the five seed from the nine seed, but it's three losses well, that's separating the, right, the five yeah. seed from the nine seed, and two losses separating the Lakers from the seven and the eight seed. So they might be stuck there. I don't know. Uh, But I think that they are, in a series, as dangerous as any team in the Western Conference other than Denver. And I think they keep proving it to you. The later we get in the season, with LeBron and AD still healthy, with the offense clicking like this, I like the new starting five with Rui, Reeves, D'Lo, and of course the big two. And, you know, Gabe Vincent back. You hope you get Vando back, and it makes them a dangerous team. There have been times when the Western Conference was this great. I remember a team almost won 50 games and missed, and missed the playoffs, yeah. you know, which the Lakers would be in danger of doing, to be honest, Correct. if this were just the eight no playing. But it's baffling. They have played well for the last few months and haven't moved a slot. No. Right? It, it's incredible because you're playing a lot of the same teams that are ahead of you, mm-hmm. but you haven't been able to advance. Five and one is a great trip. I mean, I don't care who you're playing. And they didn't play good teams. All right? But LeBron kind of – laughed off, you know, he was asked, you got road problems, all right? Did this, you know, prove anything to the team? And he said, well, I'm the last guy you should ask about winning on the road. And I get that. I, it seems like he was referring to the game seven in Golden State, which is iconic, all right? But that was a long time ago, and they do have road problems. Yeah. All right, they got the worst road record in the Western you, – you got this graphic. Yeah, I got a graphic for Among you. the Western Cross Conference playoff or play-in teams, uh, and this game – I mean, this trip, they didn't beat – Milwaukee, they beat without LeBron. All right, Milwaukee's playing like a lottery team. Everybody else they beat was a lottery team. But last year was a problem, too. And the Lakers were better on the road last year than they are this year. But check this out. Last year in the playoffs, 2-6 and six on the road. The losses, all the losses they had against Memphis on the road, Golden State on the road. Obviously, they lost to Denver on the road. So, they were, I believe, undefeated against in the first they two rounds They were undefeated at home. at home until Denver. All right, so yeah. they this road thing, right. for whatever reason, is an issue with them. Mm-hmm. And they also haven't fared well against top teams. Mm-hmm. They got one of the worst records among teams in the postseason against good teams with winning records. So, other than not being able to win on the road I don't think they've against proven, good teams, they're right there. I, I don't think, like Nick said, they've proven they're going to be as tough I, now as they're. So, I don't think they've proven it. I think we're giving them the benefit of the yes. doubt because of who LeBron and AD who are. Just, wild. Yes. So this is where this is where, and again, even though it's not the tenor of the show, you make me angry. What do you want me to do? I want you to give an opinion. Where, where do you stand, other than being a, a wry smartass? Where do you stand on the Lakers? I want to see this. Brew wants to know. We all want to know. We know you have Denver here. Yeah. Deservedly. Yeah. Where do you have the Lakers, and who do you have ahead of them? I or thought behind your them? take yesterday was perfect. No, that you're not going to disarm me by complimenting. I thought it was, I I thought it was a picture perfect. I take want an opinion. Where you compared the Lakers to Tiger Woods, and the Masters are coming up, and you know, like, ooh, once he gets on the, oh my goodness. Okay, that's it actually could happen. makes sense. It's like, hey, do you have any proof that it's going to happen? No, but I have great memories. No, what Ooh, about once last I see that year? red polo? Hold on, Ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on, but if he missed, oh, he made the cut. Oh, watch out! Now anything can happen. You hear that tiger roar? LeBron at That's not forty. A Ooh, I, I, to feel I, no, I, Brew just told me they're not good on the road, which I just showed you the graphic. Yes. They're eight and fifteen Got on it. the road against their own Got conference. It. Okay, so, and there can't be good teams. No, but hold on. So what, that I, would be a I, non-starter I, I, what do you for mean? any hold other on. team I except totally Tiger Woods. I think the Tiger hold thing basketball. is a fair analogy. Because we're giving, we're going on. off LeBron's legend. He's still playing well, but we're going off Wait, his legend but, and AD. So I don't know. So the good teams thing, I'd like to dive into that because here's what I know. They. 
crush Oklahoma but City, they right? they got a record. Hold on. The record no, I, is I, what and it I is. don't know what the record is. They own OKC. The, wait, okay. They right. got OKC. They, they're 2-1 and, one against, and they're, 24. They're two and one against New Orleans, who's ahead of them. They're 3-1 and one against Phoenix, who's ahead of them. They can't beat Sacramento, mm-hmm. and they can't beat Denver. I think they're 2-1, and one, or maybe they it split against two Golden and two State. And so I just, when we say they can't beat good teams, what I want to know. The Wolves? Who, say it again. Josh, they, one and two, I believe. Okay, so I just want to know what we're at. So, so the reason I said give a take is I, I America knows. That was a that, take. Why much no, more of a take do no, you want? I, I want to know. You, you seem to think Brew and I are resting one and on two the, against the nostalgia Wolves. and kismet to think that the Lakers are a dangerous team to everyone in the West other than Denver. And so I'm asking you, you, you trust Oklahoma City more than the Lakers. Yes. Okay. So so you don't care that Oklahoma City can't beat the Lakers. If they played that the one series, I don't. that one you don't. The last you trust three. Minnesota more than the yes, Lakers. They're one and two against the Wolves. Yes. Okay. You trust Minnesota more than the Lakers. Yes. You trust Phoenix more than the Lakers. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. There's and the Denver, take. obviously. So so you so. But like we're having like a bronze medal conversation. No, Nick, you can't I, get past Denver. I, I don't really know what we're well, talking then, like, about. I do I think you. I do think you have to give Rob. I do think you have to give what he's saying a little. You know, a little respect because we. I I know with myself, and I I admit the Lakers have played well, but so is virtually every other playoff team in the Western Conference. Yeah. And so I am looking at the West and saying. What I've seen this year tells me a Minnesota's better. Tells me, you know, a, a, a Dallas may be better. But I'm saying with LeBron's experience and AD being in his prime and the youth of Oklahoma City, the youth of New Orleans, Minnesota is not really young, but not that experienced. So right. I'm, but- I am saying, I don't, my eyes aren't necessarily telling me the Lakers are better than those teams, but I'm saying so- I, I'm – going to bet somewhat on LeBron against these teams. So, and, and, and what I'm saying is that I you this year, again, Denver has earned the respect historically and this season they're the best. Oklahoma City and Minnesota are the only teams in the West this year that your eyes are telling you are better to me, for me, I'm not you, me, right, right. are better than the Lakers. But I, correct. The Sacramento? I do, no. I mean, I mean they, they're ahead of them in the standings, and they beat them eight out of last. But they beat them eight out of last nine the, times. If they're so they've good. Played. Why aren't they better? AD, they've right. had, they've been largely healthy. The big superstars have been largely healthy. Yes, and they're fighting in the play-in. Why, yeah. if they're so good, why aren't they better? So, so I think that who they've been the last two months, which is what I showed, which is the only Denver and Boston have better records than them in the entire NBA. I think that. But is the a other closer teams indicator must be very of who they close. are. Right. Which is, I'm not, teams I'm not game sitting here saying that. that they are some juggernaut. So, what I am sitting here saying is they are one win away, or one, I guess, I flip a result with Sacramento away from being the five seed right now. And if that were the case. But it's the no, loss column. You know, you, 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 you're. You're no. playing fast no, and losing you, words. Nobody you, says they're one win behind. No. They always say they're three losses. No, you understand. Because well, that's what you need to move right, up. I guess, but if you if they had won one of those games, they would have one fewer loss, bro. This no, is my Nick, point. You, no. you should go by the loss. I, I agree with that. You're, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you take one game they lost earlier this year and flip the result. The third game of the season, yeah. they lose in overtime to Sacramento. That's what happened. You flip that result. The Lakers are currently right now the sixth seed. And – you, they would be no better or worse had they won or lost that game. But I think you would believe in them more. I'm saying I think that's foolish. I'm saying that if you want to say they can't survive the double play-in, I actually think that's a huge risk. I think they do need to climb out of that spot. But I, a team that is that like within the margins of being the sixth seed, for yeah. instance, and has been the third best team in the sport for two months and has one of the, I'll be generous, two greatest players ever – that's a team that I think is fair. It's it's not just Tiger this year at the Masters, where he's two hundred to one to win it. I don't feel that way. You don't believe in Tiger? I, n- no, not to win the <laughs> Masters this year. No, I don't. I do. Okay. <laughs> What's next for Caleb? <laughs> the whole team fought. A friend of the show, Peter Schrager, all over this Caleb news, saying the Bears took Caleb to dinner at Sophia's Steak in Lake Forest. I mean, that is an attention to detail that I like. Yeah. Really? Nick, mm-hmm. what would a successful rookie season look like for Caleb? All right, so I'm going to give the baseline minimums. 
that he needs to achieve for it to be a successful season? Because you guys know that the ceiling, I think, is very, very high. I think the Bears can win the division. I think they can win a playoff game. I think he can uh, be a pro bowler. I think those are all in play as pro far as Pro bowler as a rookie? Well. The, oh, the, I mean, oh, I forgot. Mac Jones was the seventh it, alternate. In the NFC. In, in yeah, NFC, in the possibly, NFC in particular. Um, so, baselines for it to be a successful year. He has the best numbers of any rookie quarterback. I think that should be easy to achieve with the exception of see who Minnesota takes because they're set up so well. With Justin Jefferson, those Jordan Addison, that offensive that. coaching staff, I think that guy, even if he's not awesome, could put up good numbers. A top 15, that's it, offense. Just a top half of the league overall offense. Brew, you can pick. I know you, you know, you sometimes you like yards, sometimes you like points. It depends on which fits your argument best. But whichever one you'd like, Good hopefully debating. both. Uh, three, at least three awesome games. Like where we're debating is Caleb the lead of the show that Ooh, Monday or one of the, the, the Chiefs quest for 20 and 0 will probably be the lead most yeah. days. But, you know, one of the lead topics. And the team be at, you know, I'm not a quarterback wins guy, but I assume the defense is going to be good. So the team's at least around 500. Those are the minimums. You know what I mean? So you know, three awesome games, the best numbers of any rookie quarterback, top half of the league offense, and at least, you know, an improvement in the standings. Just, so they won seven just games. Just quickly, before. if he doesn't reach those, that's you're going to be like, ah, disappointing season. Yes. Okay. Yeah, for, for my expectations, for me, for where I have him, yeah, I would say that, hmm. that's. I'm somewhat similar. Um. I, I think he needs to establish himself as a passer, all right, meaning you're accurate. Because Justin Fields' college numbers look a lot like Caleb Williams. Yeah, but the tape. Numbers. He actually had a passer rating better. than. But, but Justin was a really good college quarterback. I agree he wasn't quite as good as Caleb, it looks like. But establish himself as an accurate and poised passer. Because Justin never did that. Mm. Justin, I mean, he had some spectacular running games yep. and all highlights and stuff. Establish yourself as a passer. Establish yourself as a leader where you, are, you galvanize that locker room. And I hear stuff being said about you from your teammates like they said about Justin. Heck, like they say about Brock Purdy. I knew he was going to say Brock I'm just Purdy. saying, no, but I'm serious. <laughs> you, at One of the intangibles, all the great quarterbacks, their locker room, they follow that guy. That's so right. I think you got to establish yourself as that. I, I do want to see him be an on-time quarterback. We know he's got the dynamic scrambling and backyard f- football and all that, but I want to see him establish himself as an on-time quarterback as well, a guy that can do both. And then record-wise, I'm not predicting playoffs because, I mean, I think you got Detroit and Green Bay, obviously, mm-hmm. in that division. But I'm saying, Nick, they are in the hunt. In the mix the Right whole way. there toward the end of the season, maybe nine and eight, something like that. Yeah. So that, to me – Will be a successful. Season. I like the locker room. I know it's a it's an intangible, but when guys start to fall off, the locker room goes first. Like when Zach, when we first started, you're like, I don't know about Zach Wilson. Maybe it's just a rookie slump, and then you found out like locker room not in love. The Mac Jones lost the locker room. You see, like CJ, everybody loved yep. him. So yep. I think the locker room's a good intan- intangible. They play. You know what I want? What? What? I'm looking at the schedule. Dance. I'm trying to go. We got no, you're not gonna be able to. What are we gonna do? What was that? Outplay CJ Stroud would be cool in in Houston. Like, where are you? Didn't Zach do that? Zach Wilson. After a bewildering loss against the Wizards, Doc Rivers noted that he was taking notes about the travel team and everyone's <laughs> professionalism. Well, how did the Bucks respond by losing to the Grizzlies? Here's Doc after the game. Take a listen. I wanted to take him out of the game. Um, um, I thought he was running on fumes. Um, you know, as a coach, you got to make a judgment call sometimes, and, and medical makes the call more. You know, they kept saying he's okay, but I have eyes, and I just didn't like the way he was moving. And, uh, yeah, that's why I took him out the one time early. Um, he kept asking to go back in. The trainer said he's fine, so he kind of stuck there. Uh, but I, if, I wish I had just said, no, honestly. I mean, <laughs> go pro, go. Well, I, I, I want to ask. Well, first, I, I'm going to be nice to Nick. Oh, no, just, <laughs> and just, I mean, Nick, this, this is your pick to win the Eastern Conference. The team that has lost in the last two nights to the Wizards mm-hmm. and the Grizzlies. And I don't want to hear anything from anybody. I know you're not going to say it. Oh, Dame Dollar wasn't there. 
Well, neither was Ja Morant for the Grizzlies. All right. I mean, Ja hasn't been there all year. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. They're missing some people, too. So, uh, Nick. Steven We're not allowing you to change your pick, but still, well, you what, want an olive branch? Oh, well, no way. <laughs> olive branches. The, 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 you want to pick the Celtics the, like Wilds? The, the, <laughs> take your olive branch. <laughs> and, and, that wasn't a good the, quote. The, what? The doc? It, I, here's well, what I want to ask was. you about it. Here's what I want to ask you about it. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, we, talk, we agreed talking about the trainers and the mm-hmm. lack of professionalism from the staff was an excuse for Doc. Mm-hmm. Do you think this was the same thing? Like Obviously. Because yeah, he only played 32 minutes. He's played the last seven games. This was a back-to-back. Also, that it seems I, like he's I, fine. Listen, I, I'll explain my thoughts on the Bucks as a whole in a moment. But on Doc in this quote, yeah, that's not how it works with it, the trainers. <laughs> the trainers have final say over the head coach about a player being held out. Not yes. a player being in kept game? in. Right. The in idea game? that a coach is Come like, on. I want to take Let the guy call. out. And the trainer is going to No, leave him. It. That is not. <laughs> thank you. Thank He's you. a breather. No, no. thank you. <laughs> That's not how it works. And so for Doc to be like, well, you know, my hands are tied there. Was the going trainer. <laughs> and that was, again, if what? you didn't watch the game, the conversation was not, why didn't Giannis play more? Then if it were that, then it would make sense. Well, I wanted them two trainers that right. I can't. So, yeah, of course, he's just foisting he's on blame on anyone and everyone other than himself. That part's all true. Because they're 15 and 15 under Doc. Listen, guys, it's am I the good. only one with a memory? 15 and 15. How, does Den- how Denver finished the year last year, hoisting the trophy? How'd they finish the regular season? Timeout. Too? They well, literally at 15, 15, first 15, walked up, up, so they rested everybody. Well, they, these guys... Doc are, can't. He can, wants to, but he can't. The trainers are tied. This is in an odd way, they they also have first locked up. It's locked away because Boston has clinched <laughs> sure. it. The Warriors, they won the title in 2022. How'd they do at the end of March? They lost seven out of eight. What about the 2017 Cavs? Maybe the best LeBron team this ever. They finished the year 0-4. They actually they, they, they lost nine of, of the, at least one. They <laughs> lost nine of their final 15. <laughs> those teams. And you guys act like there's never teams that end up going to the okay, finals just, that have late season just swoons, quickly. Dog days. I mean, I, you're dog doing days. you're doing an excellent job. Of course. But now all of a sudden, the Cavs are. 14 and a half games behind the Celtics. The Bucks are 13 and a half. They're two games behind them in the loss column. If the Cavs get their act together. But they're not going to. And by the way, even if they. The, the Knicks are banged up, so they're the, not. And, and, and the, maybe the Doc's playing the long game. The Magic of, are 45 and 31, and the Bucks are 47. 20. I mean, it's there. If they keep losing to teams like the Grizzlies. The, okay. They're not playing well. There's no <laughs> denying it. They, I also will say what I said yesterday in this regard. Mm-hmm. I don't really care how they play when Dame's not there. This whole thing is going to be determined by how Giannis and Dame play together in the postseason. I, and now, am I encouraged by last night? No. Do I think Doc Rivers is already pre-excuse making? It sure <laughs> seems that way. I mean, but the last two there games. hasn't been a fundamental change on the ground as far as why I believed in this team. It wasn't because I love Doc Rivers. It wasn't because he's great at the press conference. And it wasn't because I thought the Bucks were a juggernaut without Dame alongside Giannis. That's all. One, they they are sorely lacking in athleticism. I mean, on the wing, like they just can't. And now they're big, all right, but they don't have athletes on, on the perimeter. And James, obviously, a fantastic player, but he's not like a wiry but, athletic defender. And they in a league where the floor is so spread and teams are launching threes, it's tough but, when you don't have the athletes that get out there and make it tough. On I them. am curious for both you guys. As you guys mock me and give me fake olive branches, it doesn't even allow me to change my pick. The hell am I going to use this? We, you fake can change olive it. For? You can change it. Um, no, can I'm n- not interested. I mean, we'll just we, yeah, we'll hold it over exactly. your head the rest uh, of the season. But, but go I'm ahead. just curious change for your both pick. of you who you have the Celtics going to the finals right now. This moment, who do you guys have them playing in the Eastern Conference Finals? I have the Sixers. The, well, the Sixers, they might – okay, so the Sixers, that's fine. they got to end up on the opposite side. That's fair. So you have the Sixers beating Milwaukee in round one probably. Yeah. Seven versus two. I just don't believe in Milwaukee. At all. I, I honestly, kind of Milwaukee – now, obviously, the Lakers are playing well and much better than the Bucks. But there's a similarity in that 
I'm not totally willing to write off the Bucks. I got them going to the conference finals. There you go. My first pick was the Heat. Maybe you, I'll go oh, back you, to that. You but, need the no, olive branch. No, I, I got the Bucks going to the conference finals, but it's because of Giannis and Dame's yeah, greatness. Well, I, yeah. But yeah. nothing go. else that so I'm seeing. Who's with me? They lost last year. No. Live from New York, it's the show that went to the post office today to get the mail. It's the second hour of First Things First today. Russell Wilson, either quarterback one or not on the roster. We're not 100% sure, but why one Steeler is very confident he's the man. I like that. Meanwhile, are the Chiefs headed to Dallas to play a game? No. Just the whole franchise ups and moves. This is the dumbest story we've ever talked about. <laughs> one of the dumbest stories we've ever talked about. Coming up in a half hour. But right now, a very smart segment where I pretend to read a fake letter that I wrote upstairs from two children with names that rhyme. <laughs> wow. Oh, we're a smart show. Dear Wilds, love the show and the recent conversations about Wemby and how many stocks, steals, and blocks he has. Question for Brew Before he casts his official vote, how much does Brew analyze defensive statistics like defensive plus minus and stocks? Thanks, Ryan and Brian. Well, question for you, Brew. Are you analyzing stocks and other defensive metrics? Oh, I'm looking at all of it. Defensive win shares. And stocks? Defensive BP. <laughs> Stock. We have a pun. Damn. <laughs> it's just so stupid. I think that belly is getting the bigger. The best part of that was he just kept answering, looking at you, and that was on the screen for a good two seconds for Brew News. You, you, Western music. <laughs> you know what? And that's I why. Wish this bit that's would why die I don't feel to. the least bit guilty about what? About flouting your rules in this week's Bud List. Okay. <laughs> your rule is all three. You only, it used to be five. It used to be when five. When I first bro. started the show, it was five. You yeah. cut it we to three because I was our shining basement. too brightly. It, it, no, all that's right, bro. So that's exactly I, right. I, I got and America. he claimed the studio yeah, exactly. and like the show shorter. Surveys. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Surveys. focus group say they want yeah, less exactly. names. Right, let's go, let's go. I've got five people in this week's book. <laughs> yeah. Just to Good job, get, it, bro. get, it, Good. get your it to them. All right, at number three, C.J. Stroud. All right, now look, very subtly, he'll deny it probably, but Nick has tried to steal you from me. CJ. Well, you said you very didn't loudly, see more from him. Right. loudly, Greg Jennings has tried to oh. steal him, but you're still my guy, and that's why I'm trying to motivate you, CJ, for next year. Now, look, it's a tall order, but I got to just kick the facts. Brock Purdy got to the Super Bowl in his second year. True. Joe Burrow got to the Super Bowl in his second season. Mm. All right. And so now that is the charge. All right, and you do have great weapons now. You got three very good receivers, maybe one still great. You got Joe Mixon in the back there. You got a defense that was good last year and will, by all estimations, be better this year. Now, the challenge is going to be this. You got one of your great receivers. You just got Stephon Diggs. Stephon, if he brings his diva-like qualities to Houston, he may not or he may. You have got to be able to handle it. You have got to fight off the temptation to force the ball to him and lay down the law that you are the leader of the offense and you're going to throw to the open man. And a lot of times it will be Stefan. But if you can do that, you know, I told you what Purdy and, and Burrow did. Maybe you can get to the Super Bowl this year. CJ, I believe in you. All right, at number two, uh, same trade, essentially, Josh Allen. All right, now, Josh is the old school rappers used to say. It's on you, so what you going to do? All right, it's your turn, Josh. <laughs> all right, now, look, nobody really wants to hear all the excuses. And they're legit. You did lose your number one receiver and your number two receiver, for that matter. You did lose five captains this year. You did lose some of your greatest defensive players. And no, you don't have a number one receiver currently on your roster. Whether those are legit explanations and maybe not even excuses, no one wants to hear it. Because they're looking at Patrick Mahomes and they're saying he won two Super Bowls the last two years without his best receiver, Tyreek Hill. They're looking at Lamar Jackson saying he's won two MVPs, never had 
an awesome number one receiver. And I'm telling you, the haters <laughs> are waiting to just throw the Madden cover. Uh, uh, the, the MVP votes. All of that in your face, Josh. So you got to go out there and get it done. Nobody's thinking you got to win the Super Bowl. But you have to get this team to the postseason again and still have a great season. Josh, I believe in you. Now here, Wilds, you're not going to like this, okay. but I'm doing it How anyway. How many guys are on this? No guys, ah. but three gals. And a shout-out to the NCAA Women's Tournament, which has taken the nation by storm. I don't know if everybody knows, but their game Monday, was it Monday night or Sunday night? The Monday LSU night. and Iowa, 12.3 million viewers more than the NBA Finals and the World Series last year. All right, so Caitlin Clark, you're number one. All right, everybody, the casuals think you're the GOAT. But a lot of women who are really invested in the game, and a lot of men as well, are looking at it saying, nah, nah, she's not the GOAT. She, at the very least, She's got to get a win, a championship to even be in the conversation. All right, and I get it because all the other greats, as wild as it's shown, have won championships. And you can't just say, well, they played at UConn. They played at Tennessee. USC back in the day with Cheryl Miller. Yes, but Cheryl Swoops played at Texas Tech, which wasn't, you know, a basketball power. So it has been done. I know it's a tall order. I know it's tight, but it's right. All right, so you got to go out there, Caitlin. And if you do beat, LSU, Connecticut, and then South Carolina, presumably, that'll be a heck of a thing on your resume, and you maybe will be viewed as the GOAT. All right, the second one, Don Staley. Don, you are a made woman already, head coach of South Carolina. You've won two championships. Here's the thing. I think the class she wants to get into is Gino Ariema and sure. Pat Summit. Yeah. Now, Gino's got 11 championships. Pat Summit has eight, and I get it. You don't necessarily have to get that many. But the last two years, last year 36 and 0, then you lose in the final four. This year 36 and 1. So if you go 72 and 2 and in two years and don't win the championship, that is a stain. Mm. Maybe only for a little while, but it's a stain right now on the resume. So, Don, you got to go get it done. And finally, Paige Beckers. Now, look, Paige. When Gino said a, a week ago that she's the best player in the country, a lot of people thought, please, it's ridiculous. But no, when they were freshmen, they, Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers were both freshmen. Paige Beckers was player of the year. Yeah. And she was viewed as better. And I remember watching like, oh, this is dude. This, she's the one. All right. But now, obviously, the tables are turned. But I'm sure Paige, with the injuries, they, they took you down, the injuries for the last couple of years. But I'm sure in her mind, she still thinks she's the oh, best yeah. player. You got a chance to go out there and prove it. And here's the last thing. Look at these names. Rebecca Lobo. Oh, yeah. Sue Bird, Swin Cash, Diana Taurasi, Maya Moore, and Brianna Stewart. All UConn Oskies. alum. Mm -hmm. They all won rings. Paige Beckers is in their class as far as individual talent. But she, they all got rings. You got to go get a ring, Paige. I know it's a tall order, but that's what you got to do. I do believe in you. Bro, did that feel good? That, that was great. Yeah, great. That was back great. to your room. I might start doing five. that every week. You know what? I think you should. <laughs> that, that was, that was you know, good. Like, Wiles is going to chastise no, me out here. I mean, he's, while uh, you don't were in the midst of the Don Saley thing, I saw him. He was texting our bosses. So <laughs> see what's going on All right. Uh, so, shout out to Jay Caspian King for bringing this – to my attention. Draymond Green, I don't know if you guys know this, is a podcast. What's it called? The, uh, the Draymond Green Show. I'll check it out. It's with uh, my friend Colin Coward's media, our friend Colin Coward's media company. And he was on yesterday, the day before, and had this to say about the Houston Rockets and the game they have coming up against the Rockets. Let's take a listen. The Rockets coming out to play. Um, <laughs> they have lost a couple in a row. And you know, you, you're three games behind with seven games left, and you're losing the tiebreaker. So four games behind, in a sense, with seven to go. Uh, if my math serves me correctly, tomorrow will be an opportunity to end their season. So here's the thing. Draymond Green, you're a four-time champion. You're Defensive Player of the Year. You are the linchpin of a modern dynasty. You are now beefing with <laughs> Terry Eason, Jalen Green, 
an injured Shingoon, Jabari Smith, <laughs> and the 11 seed Rockets <laughs> holding over them that you can lock up the 10 seed tonight? <laughs> you were the defending champs a year ago. Like, or how the mighty have fallen, my friend. <laughs> like, I, this, there is an element of sometimes it's like, oh, don't punch down because it's mean. Sometimes it's don't punch down because then people realize, oh, you're not punching down. You're punching across. <laughs> like, that. that is the company with which you keep Draymond. At the very least, you got to win today. And you, you can't win. really actually take too much joy in it. Because the night that Terry Eason said Warriors come out to play was the same night that you left Steph Curry literally in tears because you couldn't keep your hands to yourself or your mouth or your voice to yourself to the officials. So, Draymond, yeah, you're under duress. That's a good one. And, and you're right. They better win. You put this out. I mean, I get it. You're right about everything you said, punching down. It does. It's kind of sad. It's, the it's kind of sad. But yeah. it'll be even sadder yeah. if they lose. All right. I'm going to add an old friend and fan of being on the bud list. Mac Jones. Oh. Mac Jones was on, uh, was it TikTok, Dusty? Yeah, yeah, TikTok. Here's Mac Jones' latest TikTok. Take a listen. What's up, everybody? It's Mac Jones, and this is my get to know. <laughs> is that good? Yeah, if it looks like <laughs> just tell me. I don't really have too many, but I mean, I golf a little bit. I like to go fishing, I like to be on the beach, I like to do a little bit of rapping. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I do though, I do. I, I got a couple songs, but I don't I don't nobody know nobody knows about it, so I'm letting the world know now I'm not in New England. <laughs> <laughs> Is he joking or not? I think he's serious. I you wanna serious? hear these songs. Do you think he's joking or do you think he's serious? I I wanna know what you think, buddy. He's serious. If he's serious, I'm happy. If he's not serious, I'm upset. Why? Why? If he's totally joking around, and he's like, imagine me with bars and then cackling in laughter. Because it's an issue of like, could you imagine me showing presence <laughs> and creativity <laughs> and quick thinking and, charisma. and processing yeah. and charisma <laughs> and command of the room? Isn't that laughable? <laughs> I don't like that. If you're going for a joke hobby, just be like, you know what I like? Spelunking. I got a big hat. Oh, I'm into the canes. You are but, right about that one. But if he actually has bars. Ooh, I'm back in on Mac Jones. No. <laughs> I, at least he's got a Drew Locke ceiling. I've seen Drew Locke on the sidelines. A, well, a Drew Locke ceiling. I, I think he's serious. If he has bars, I feel When's great. When's the about. last time that Mac off the field conducted himself like a franchise quarterback? If he has bars. Okay. <laughs> if he's got bars, what do you think of his laugh? You know, he thought it was fun. <laughs> he really, he, that's actually a really good question, Nick. I mean, honestly, when? Yeah. Not walking literally the draft? Not since you honestly, walked the draft. No, the, the wink, podium. the wink that I always text you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's head down to Pittsburgh. Cam Hayward uh, lined up with Brew as a Russ believer. Take a listen. I thought there was going to be a competition there uh, between him and Kenny. Uh, but now going forward, um, you just look for the leadership he's had. Um, a guy who's been in Seattle, who's won games, uh, won a Super Bowl already, um, didn't have the the best time in Denver. But, uh, you know, I think he's a hungry guy who's ready to prove a lot of people wrong. Okay, it's courtesy of the Rich Eisen Show. Brew, do you expect Russ to silence his doubters? Well, look, this is a tough or interesting situation for me. Because if you guys remember a few few weeks ago, before the Steelers got any of the quarterbacks, and it, the reports were that they weren't going for anybody. Mm. And I said, oh, they should go for Russ. I said, hey, really, I'd go for Justin Fields first. Yeah. But we didn't think they'd go for either. They end up getting Russ first and now Fields. So I like both guys. I think they're in a great position, the Steelers. Here's what I'll say about Russ. I do think he's going to win the job. I, he's got it right now. I think he'll secure it in training camp. But I also think, I think Cam Hayward, one of the leaders of their team, respected. That'll help Russ. He's obviously got his back. The leash on Russ will be short. And it should be. But it's up to him 
to if he play like he can't come out slowly. He can't come out playing poorly because if he plays poorly and doesn't look great, they were, they're going to be like, we want to see what Justin can do. So how many – suppose he's I playing think mediocre. Rusty, Not like, I mean, if they're winning, if they're like 3-1 and one and he's well, playing and mediocre, they'll, they'll – you know, I think they'll keep – they'll obviously keep him in there. But I'm saying if they lose some of these games early and he plays kind of like he did in Denver, then I think he could be in trouble. But I, I think he'll be able to hold off. I think he'll play well. But the leash is short, and it and as a even though I like Russ, it should be because Justin is more True. likely to be your future. True. So, True. just come over to this side. Of the no, side. I'm not. No, True. I like True. both guys. Bro, I, I think I they're know. in a great position. I, I, I know, the but the, but a, a week ago, the you you were I think ten toes down on Russ being the week one starter? and week 18 starter. I think the question now, was week now, one starter. Now, I think it was on the now roster. I think, I think that was, just, is he going to be on the I, roster? I, I, now I – no, he will be on the roster. the roster. And then Tomlin was talking about how it's a race, but somebody's in pole position. Yeah. And then Bruce Not did somebody. a whole NASCAR Russ. thing and, uh, about it. So, listen, the we, we know he's not going to silence his doubters. Bruce is his biggest supporter, and Bruce just benched him before. No, I didn't bench him. He said three and one. You can't. I, I, what am I, Wilds? Yeah. I, I don't know. I hate to sound like Nick. I don't know. I'm objective. Objective. I, uh, yeah. yeah. All right? and, and I am saying, even as uh, a guy that likes Russ, the leash should be short. Yeah. So here. And you got to go out there and secu- take it, seize it, Russ. Seize yeah. it. Okay. I don't think it's going to happen. And if Vegas is right about these odds, that the Steelers are. I mean, look at that. Baltimore one plus one twenty five, Cincinnati plus one sixty five, Cleveland five and a half to one, Pittsburgh eight and a half to one. If Pittsburgh is that far away from contention, then the person who should be in pole position is actually Justin Fields. It makes That's more fair, sense. But for I don't them. think the Steelers. No, I, I, that I, way. I agree right. with you. But I, they, they, they clearly don't. What's up, Wilds? Well, I just I, wonder. Nor should they? Mm-hmm. Right? You, you're kind of on the fence here, just like the Steelers. Because we've seen the Jets, like, we can win the AFC East with a 40-year-old quarterback. We saw the Falcons give uh, Kirk, uh, Cousins. Kirk Cousins. How old is Kirk Cousins? 36. 36. With one Achilles. With Achilles. They gave mm-hmm. him a big deal. I think Russ is 34. So why 35. all of a sudden? 35. Yeah. Why, why all of a sudden does the future have to be Justin Fields? Why can't it be Russ? Why can't he, Russ be our future? Because a year us- ago he was bad. Last year he was – I thought he was – Pretty, he was okay. Yeah. Nick thinks he was bad. I think he was pretty good. The, the numbers do say he was better than he actually was, but I thought he was pretty good. But that's it. He's coming off two subpar years. Yeah. And, and now, I, if he goes out there and plays well, then I, I think they'll gladly keep sure. him as the starter. Yeah, but they, but but he won't. And and so like the I just. I, There's a lot of things set up for him to play well. Th- see, if I, he doesn't play so well, I, he truly is. So washed. by the way, I, that's the other thing where I disagree with you. The Steelers do not have good weapons. The, the running backs aren't the, good. No. Jalen Warren I, I, and Najee. So, 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 to be clear, I think Najee is below average, flatly. I think Jalen Warren, every team's got a Jalen Warren. A guy who, if you get six carries a game, looks dynamic. If you, in today's NFL, don't have a Jalen Warren, what have you been doing? I, and but they're, no, they're you can I, work with I'm that. just being I'm being serious. They're wide receivers. They have one guy that is talented and a total malcontent. Quits on plays and then it's, you show him the film and he's like, "Damn straight, you trying to? I'm not trying to get hit. It's football. Yes. I can get hurt doing that." Like that's true. Point. Deontay Johnson, they just got rid of, and you're like, "Oh, I love Pat Fryer." I mean, sure, is he's, pretty he's, good. He's good. They're going to Pat draft is a probably receiver. The eighth best receiver in football. They're going or to. Dra- they're party. going to draft a receiver well, to go alongside George Pickens, and George Pickens I, knows. It's time to shine. Okay. If I'm I want to ever get you, paid, I, I got to I, shine. I, in that division, bro, do they have the worst weapons by far? Obviously. Browns got good weapons. The yeah. Bengals? Bengals got I good weapons. I know you love the Ravens. Yes. Okay. By far, yeah. the worst. I mean, Ravens in that division, Henry. do they have at best the third best but, quarterback but situation? On, maybe year, the worst. But oh, uh-huh. last year they had clearly the worst quarterback situation in the but, division. Yes. And they had the same weapons, yeah, and look, they finished ten and seven and made the, the playoffs. I I understand that. I, I mean, I, I, even I, even as bad as you think Russ was last year, mm-hmm. he is was ten times better than the quarterback play they had. Nah, no, no, not ten times better. Eight. Nope. nope At nope. least nope. eight. Nope. Won't give you that either. Cheap, sir. Easy. Medal's time. 
Lake Show. LeBron left-handed. That's a great pass. Some tough defense from the Wizards, but AD finds a way. Lakers win again. And I'm fair. They were even though AD had a monster game, it was against the Wizards. No medal. Bronze medal. Chris Stapps, 27 and 12, in a nice win for the Boston Celtics. So Chris Stapps gets a medal. There's silver medal. Devin Booker. Devin Booker, 40 points, would crush off his 50-point game. Mm. Devin Booker with a do- another dominant performance as the Suns are dealing with this gauntlet of a schedule quite well. And then, gold medal, Malachi Flynn. Hey. Yeah. I know they yeah. lost. He's at five points per game for his career. <laughs> he gets 50, so he gets a gold medal. There's the podium from good last night Pretty good. in the association. Let's check in on... Our favorite franchise just straight up leaving Kansas City. Uh, quick story, the Chiefs lost the vote to renovate Arrowhead, which is the public voted down a sales tax initiative. Chiefs team president Mark Donovan floated out the idea of the Chiefs leaving Arrowhead. Well, Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson said, sure. Since the Chiefs were founded in Dallas in uh, 1960 before moving to Kansas City in 1963. Welcome home, Dallas Texans, which they were called. Wow. A devastating day. I, we only have a minute left in the show. I'm surprised you're not more upset about this. All right, so obviously the Chiefs aren't leaving Kansas City. There might be some threats they move across the state line, but they're not moving the greater Kansas City metro area. But we've got to do it. Yeah. Dusty the board. Oh, and we wow. try to stay apolitical on the show, yeah. but Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson, first of all, super <laughs> unique name, buddy. Good job. Uh, I mean, give me a break. I mean, you're the Dallas Texans. I understand it would be nice to have an actual SBOB team in Dallas, but, bro, he's on the board. We have a politician on the board, Dallas wow. Mayor Eric Johnson. Okay. He's on the board. The 2024 Chiefs Bulls and Board. It's mm. still a little, what? just empty right now. I well, because people have learned their damn lesson, that's Ooh, why. Yeah. This guy hasn't, evidently. He's probably going to get primaried. I don't right? think that's sure. going to play well in Dallas, either. <laughs> All those Cowboys fans. Oh, down. my goodness. It's the uh, ultimate speak is up next. the Cowboys. We'll see you on Monday. No show tomorrow. Hey, college football fans. Joel Klatt here. And over on my podcast, The Joel Klatt Show, we discuss the best teams, players, and storylines in all of college football. Any questions? Then send them in to The Joel Klatt Show mailbag, and I'll answer them. Tap the banner to follow The Joel Klatt Show on Spotify.